This right here is a rocket bat box. This is a design I found online. I got no idea if it actually works. I've never had any luck with bat boxes. I've never had any luck with anything other than bluebird boxes come to think of it. But I decided I'd give it a shot. This is made out of one sheet of treated three quarter inch plywood and two boxes of screws, one and five eighths and one and a quarter. Uh, and whoever designed this was not the person who was going to build it and they definitely never built one uh, because they would have changed the design if they did. Uh, there's a lot of stuff about this thing that is kludgy to say the least. Uh, first and foremost, um, when I built this, when the plywood was still wet, it weighed 68 and a half pounds. And the instructions recommend that you put this 20 foot in the air on a pole. I don't know about you, but how in God's green earth is someone supposed to get a 70 pound chunk of wood on top of a 20 foot pole uh, with without a boom lift or, you know, wings or maybe a helicopter? But mm -hmm, we'll see. Uh, it's been drying in the garage for a couple months. I think it's probably only 50, maybe 40 pounds now. I think it's somewhere in the in the 40, 45 pound range now. Which, you know, is still super heavy. I only plan to get this about 10 to 15 foot off the ground because I only got a 21 foot pipe. And it needs to go at least 4 foot in the ground, if not 5 or 6. So... And, you know, that's four foot tall, so what does that give me? Five and four, nine out of that. That only gives me 11 foot above the ground. So the way this thing works is it's got a multi-tiered set of caverns under here, and there's little zigzagging spacers that allow the bats to move in and out, and it allows it to trap air and all that, uh, keep the heat in and you just slide this onto a two inch pole and then bolt it through with some carriage bolts. So this is destined for the Hutchinson house out in the wildflower meadow. Um, and uh, it's gonna be an adventure. No idea how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna lift this up. Uh, I'm thinking some sort of like 10 man Easter Island multi rope sort of system. <laughs> Um, but we shall see, uh, and you're going to come along for the journey. That's a big old pole. And we're gonna put a 50 plus pound chunk of wood on top of that somehow. I don't know how I'm gonna do that, but we gonna do that. All right, I think it's been probably a year, but it's August of the following year now, and uh, we're gonna try and put this back box up today. Uh, if we got enough time, we got a crew of volunteers out here, and if I'm able to figure out a way to get about I guess about 15 foot and uh, here somewhere, dig a four to five foot hole with a slope and uh, get some ropes hooked up to this thing on some sort of quick detach like linkage. Uh, we should be able to uh, raise the bat box up just like that. Uh, tie her down, pour in some concrete, let it set, pull the ropes back off, uh, pack her back in with dirt and uh, we should hopefully have a rocket bat box somewhere in this vicinity. Yeah, and uh, then I'll be able to uh, get rid of this here pine tree that we don't really want. Uh, and we'll still have a, a nice little hawk and uh, like a kingbird perch out here in the middle of the field. Because that's why I'm leaving this tree here. So I'll probably girdle this thing and kill it. And uh, then we'll have a bat box here that'll replace it when it falls down. So I guess I'm going to get to bushwhacking and digging. Okie dokie. So 
We've drilled our holes in the pipe and affixed our carriage bolts to hold on the bat box. Don't know if that's straight, don't think it is. Uh, it'll just have to get over it. The bats will make do. Um, if you had, say, a two inch pipe that was perfectly sized for this and it was punch tube, that'd make it really easy. You could just slide it on in there and you wouldn't even have to drill it, you'd just line it up. But because I've got like an inch and a quarter pipe, um, I'm having to drill through it over here with just some drill bits and a cordless drill. Nothing too crazy. Drill through one side with an eighth, one side with an eighth, then go back with a three eighths, drill that right through, and then that right through, and then drop in your three eighths carriage bolt. Drive it in, torque it down, good to go. Now, what I'm going to do over here is pretty much dig me like a six foot trench. I'm going to basically dig a triangle into the ground, I'm going to dig four foot or dig as deep down as I can with the um, post hole digger probably dig about an eight inch hole and then cut back into that about six foot out with a trenching shovel you know at like a 30 45 degree angle like that all the way down to the bottom or at least far as I can and then we can slide this in here pick it on up raise it to the back kick in all the dirt uh, up here on the front uh, you know raise it like a flag pole hopefully and if it's too heavy to do that, what we'll do is we'll tie ropes all around the front of it, maybe set up like a snatch block or something and a pulley, and then raise it up this way, like a barn. Don't know, um, probably not gonna put it up today, but I wanted to get everything prepped and at least give it a shot while we got some guys out here. So yeah, I'll probably set up a GoPro and uh, film us raising it, and uh, hopefully uh, that'll be the end of it. All right, I think we're plenty deep now. Uh, I've got the postal digger as deep down as I can get it damn near. We're finally down into the groundwater, so I don't think I'm going to make too much progress going any deeper. So this is about four foot nine. Um, what you call it? Postal digger? Um, and we're about, we're about four and a half foot down now, so that's probably about as far as we need to go. I think I might do one or two more just to clean up the bottom. i got fire ants coming up my leg right now. And, uh, yeah, down into the anoxic layer where the gray clay starts showing up. So, I think we're about good. I think we're about good. Time to dig a trench now. All right, I'm a bit winded, but got my trench dug. So, I'm going to lay this into position and see how far I can get on my lonesome. I ain't going to get it up, but be worth giving it a stab, though. All right, well, I went back to get volunteers, and lunch came early, and they all left. So, it was just me and one other guy. We gave it the old college try. I tried picking it up off the back of the truck while he backed up, and it was just too damn heavy. Um, me and him got in the back of the truck. We got as far as close as we could, and it was just, it wasn't working. It kept hitting the back of the channel and then digging in. We dropped a two by four down in there, and it would slide real well on the two by four, and then it would catch on the two by four, and then it would catch. Then it wasn't gonna get down. Can't talk, too exhausted. But anywho, didn't work. So, we're getting a wider board. This is like a two by 10 or something. We'll probably trim it or something anyway. It's gonna go down in the back of the hole and uh, I'm gonna have to either work out some sort of pulley snatch block system up here and uh, use the truck to raise the thing or we're gonna have to get like a, we got a guy around the corner who's got an excavator and I think he might be willing to let us chain it to the tooth of his thing and have him pick it up and you know, get it high enough that we can drop it in the hole but I think it might not be tall enough. Um, we shall see. But uh, it ain't going in today, so I just threw the board over the hole. We're probably not going to be able to get to it for another um, three weeks or so. So it'll just sit out here in the field, and hopefully it won't rot. I mean, it is treated. Um, I got faith. I just hope it doesn't bend and break and everything. But not going in today. I'm going to have to drop back uh, drop back 20 and punt. Figure this out another day. Well, it's been a hot minute again. It is now early. March of 2022, bat box is still out here where I left it, except somebody rolled it over, so I rolled it back the other day. I'm out here with the reciprocating saw, because of this, I'm about to take three foot off of this, because it does not need to be 15 foot in the air. We're going to go for 12, so yeah, just need to make that cut real quick. But, before we get into that, I think I have an idea on how I can get this thing up into the air. We are having to dig a trench and have a bunch of pulleys and come alongs and snatch blocks and 20 people and raising the thing like a like an Easter Easter Island head or something like that. I think I've got a much easier, simpler way to do it. 
Now, I've been thinking on this for several months now, just off and on, not really too hard. And I finally figured out what the best solution was uh, that should hopefully not cost me anything and be really simple and quick and be the easiest thing with only need, needing four guys without any special supervision. So, so let me show you what I got in mind. So in order to get this thing up in the air and down in the hole, I'm gonna try and turn all of this salvaged scrap lumber into a light duty wooden gantry uh, that's about 12 foot tall, give or take, probably closer to 11 uh, once all the angles are worked out. And that should get it, get me high enough that I can get the bat box, the bottom of the bat box up to about 10 foot in the air, more or less. And then I'll have the remaining, uh, what is that? Two or three foot hanging out the bottom and I can tilt the thing at an angle, put it in the hole, get four guys to carry the gantry over above the hole, line it up, have a chain hoist mounted at the top, which I raise the bat box with, drop in the hole, lower it down, get it to where it's at the bottom of the hole, set down, mostly self-sustaining, and then brace it in place, pour in the concrete, leave it there, let it set, and then when I'm done, lower the, um, the chain hoist all the way, take chain off the bat box, pick up the gantry, move it over, tip it down, pull off the chain hoist, disassemble it, and uh, still have all of the lumber mostly intact. So that's my plan. I'm going to throw all this stuff in the truck, take it home, cut everything, get it all shaped, build it, get everything ready, and then disassemble it and bring it back here. Because that'll let me know if I actually need to go out and buy lumber specifically for this or not. Because some of this stuff is in not so great shape. But this will get allow me to set it all up, test it, and, you know, pick myself up with it. Because if it can pick up a 200-pound meat, it can pick up a 100-pound bat box. So it only needs to support about 200 pounds. Um, that'll be, you know, the chain hoist. Chain hoist weighs like 30, 35 pounds. The bat box itself weighs about 45, 50 pounds. And then the pole weighs about 30, 35 pounds. So what's that? So that's it's really only about 100 pounds in total, which I think this rotten lumber can do. And if it can pick me up, that'll be me plus chain hoist, you know, 230 250 pounds depending on what kind of clothes I'm wearing and how much crap's in my pocket. Yeah, so we'll see if it'll survive that. It'll survive a bat box All right, three foot of pipes cut off Got all the wood loaded up and it is Probably not going anywhere it's enough to get you know 20 miles home And uh, I gotta go find a red rag to zip tie to the end of that or something. I don't know or I just won't and uh, Yeah, I'm gonna take all this back to my house test it all out, proof it, and uh, see if I need to buy any more lumber. All right, well, I survived the journey, so I'm gonna start rough cutting wood and just get it all, you know, all of the rot off of most of it, you know, true some of the stuff up because I think I need like six four foot boards. Uh, one or two eight foot boards and four 12 foot boards not all that much actually um so i got overkill over here that one doesn't count that's that's a truck board everybody needs a truck board so yeah i'm just gonna trim off all the bad stuff so i know what i'm working with and then uh stack it up let it dry out um well it's mostly dry but it's supposed to rain um shouldn't take much and uh, then I'm going to lay it all out, and I think I'm going to have to do some... I'm still trying to figure out what to do with the 12-footers, how to secure the top board to it. Um, I kind of would prefer, if possible, to have, like, the top boards, like, forked like that. Or the legs forked like that with the top board in it. But, anywho, y'all don't care about none of that. Uh, y'all just want to see me put a bat box up in the air. So I'm going to go fool with that, and I'll catch you when I got this thing roughed out and built. Alrighty, so I trimmed up all the lumber and I made a little scale model out of uh, bamboo shish kebab skewers. Um, just to kind of proof out the design, see where there's weaknesses, you know, what, you know, I'm not necessarily thinking in my head. Because I'm not going off any plans, I'm just, you know, freeballing this. And uh, it seems to be pretty strong actually, the only weakness I noticed. Oh, and also, ignore the fact that all the geometries are slightly off. Um, that's the consequence of using round skewers rather than rectangular boards so just don't don't worry don't worry about that but it seems to be 
fairly strong. To scale, it needs to hold about 18-ish pounds, and it seems to hold that just fine. Uh, the, the one major weakness I noted is I need to tie like a rope diagonally that way because if it's on a slick surface or potentially if we pick the thing up on all fours, it's going to want to split this way. You know, these legs are going to want to slide. If I move it up here to a slick surface like this bench, the legs want to slide out like that. And that could blow these joints out right here and cause the whole thing to collapse. So I need to put ropes diagonally across the mineral, middle which uh, shouldn't interfere with the bat box lifting at all. And when I do that, then when it gets picked up, it won't split apart properly, hopefully, so long as the ropes don't explode. They shouldn't. So yeah, um, it does seem to work. It does seem to hold strength, but then again, we're comparing bamboo to southern pine at different, it's, it's, it's closer than I'd like. Let's just say that. But we're still gonna give it a whirl because why not? All right, well, it's dark out, but I was working on this anyway. Got the, basically the whole leg assembly made. So, four foot, um, four foot board, four foot from the bottom, base of the board at four foot. That makes the base six foot, then six inches. Uh, from the top, I just drilled a six inch screw all the way through and it gives me just big enough of a lip that I can kind of do a little chisel work on this board and have it slot down in there. That'll also keep it from wiggling side to side. And then I can run another six inch screw clean through all three of these, hopefully. Or more likely two, three and a half inches, one there, one there, and uh, maybe a six inch just through it, just for, you know, good measure. And then I have these boards, which are all either five or six foot. And I was going to come to four, but might as well leave them full length. No reason to waste wood. Um, or I may just have, you know, six inches stick out or one foot stick out on either side. Or I might actually um, kind of offset them a little bit just so that I'm not drilling through the same place. And uh, yeah, those will go like this and these are these are 90 degrees offset from where they're supposed to be they'll be like that and then i'll have these boards bracing each corner and yeah it's dark and i ain't ate yet so i'm gonna go inside and do that and i'll work on this uh on a later day all right it's the next evening and i got that much done but i gotta run and eat dinner right quick and hopefully i can finish this but i just kind of chiseled in this cut in about a half inch and then just chiseled that up kind of just kind of winged it both sides i need to cut that deeper so this ends a little bit higher but don't don't tell anybody about that and i think i just need to put in the cross beams tie some rope on that to uh you know secure it uh and uh raise her up and uh then haul my fat butt up into the air and see whether or not it breaks or not all right there that is put together only got ate up a good bit by gnats it's the legs are not terribly sturdy uh, and also that's kind of a weak point because all any flex on it goes right into that center section right there um, So that's something to really be mindful of But not much I can do about it at the moment. I really should have made that a 4x4 four four. Um, Anywho, I still need to add the ropes I'm kind of tempted to honestly add a, a middle support just to keep the legs from walking in uh, But I just don't have a board lying around at the moment um, May look into that. I think I've got. I think I got some decking lumber or something I can use. But yeah, now I just need to paint all of the joints because I have to disassemble this and move it 20 miles, and then put it back together in the same, you know, orientation. So I need to spray paint all the corners so that I can color code them and match them all back together, and uh, you know, put it back together the right way. But before I do that, I gotta lift this thing up in the air and test it. Well, actually, I'm gonna do that first. But I gotta lift this thing up in the air and test it first because I ain't gonna haul it all the way over there just to have it snap in half on me. So, and if it, you know, horribly snaps in half up there at the front, then I've got a bunch of eight foot four by four, so I can just swap one of those in there and we'll call it good. But anywho, I'm gonna paint all the corners, lift it up, get train hoist hooked up to it, and uh, we'll see whether or not it breaks underneath my fat butt. All right, there's the gantry. That is a six foot step ladder. It is much taller in person than I thought it would be. So, 
Yeah. And I have already hung on it about a half dozen times and swung around on it. Uh, surprisingly, I was able to hold myself up. I thought I'd gotten too fat for that, but anywho. Batbox gantry works, surprisingly. I'm still kind of surprised. I really thought it was going to torque in half when I was raising it. Um, but there she is. Now all I have to do is uh, bust out the eight-foot step ladder, work out something to uh, attach the chain hoist to the top. I, you know, with how minimal weight I'm throwing around here, um, I think honestly I can just get away with a, uh, I don't know, maybe like two foot of rope, something like that. Actually, I think I have a hanger strap for a, for like a rafter beam that would probably hold the chain hoist perfectly. Let me check. Well, I don't know what this guy was for. But I think the chain hoist will hook onto that, so that should be perfect, I think. Yeah, something like that. Sometimes life just works out like that. Okie dokie, well I threw the half ton engine hoist on it and it picked me up just fine and I swung around on it and it didn't break. So that's a good sign, covered in rust now, but anywho. Then uh, me and Dad dropped it down, I grabbed the impact gun and just zipped her all apart. And uh, hopefully I remember how to put it back together. And hopefully it goes back together uh, just as well as it went together. It only has to work. I guess theoretically, I would like to keep it. Um, I don't really know what use I have for it, but might as well. It's my payment for doing this off time, but anywho. It only has to go, go together three times and survive at least two, three, 20 mile trips. Anywho, but... I'm gonna stack all this up, then load it in the truck, haul it out there, set it all back up, and uh, hopefully we'll have a bat box in the air. All right, we're here. Bat box is over there. Let's see if we can get this slapped together, get it up in the air, and get a bat box in the ground today. All right, that's all together. It only took me 15 minutes, so now time to go grab the eight foot ladder. Get a couple guys over here, pick her on up, carry her on over there, finish digging out the hole, hoist her up, drop her in. Anchor, concreter, let it sit for a week and uh, pull it all down. Hopes it, hope it stays in place. What light through yonder gantry breaks. There she is. Let me get over here where the light's a bit better. There's our bat box and she's kind of straight. The bat box itself is crooked on the pole on account of it being offset to one side. Um, but it is mostly straight up and down. Yeah, it's hard to tell because the bat box is bent, so it throws your whole perspective off. But she's up there. I ended up foregoing the chain hoist. It wasn't needed. Um, I remembered I brought my snap block just in case I needed it, which I actually bought specifically for this. It had been on my list to buy one for forever, and I felt now was the time, but I ended up just throwing that up there on that, um, metal wire uh, engine block puller upper and uh, just hauled it up there with a half inch rope and or five eighths rope and that's all it took I had two other guys help me and we we had to reposition the gantry twice we had to pull it back out this way to get the pole far enough into the hole and then pick it up and then move it back way to get it straight um, if you do this I would try and make the gantry a little bit taller or cut your pole a little bit shorter that was all we could do to get that down there and she's only about five and a half foot in the ground didn't go the whole six foot like i wanted but it's it's close enough the the top of the gantry is 11 six i think so wow she's actually a fair bit taller than that but anywho i put 120 pounds of quick creed in there so uh that'll hold it and that that went all the way up to about five six inches from the lip so that's five foot 120 pounds of concrete anchoring the well about 80 pounds of that monstrosity down there so that'll counterbalance it perfectly and yeah uh we'll see whether this survives a hurricane and whether any bats use it but she's up there for now and uh i guess i'll give you a final report whenever i uh in a week when the or i guess the end of the weekend when the concrete sets and i can pull down the gantry disassemble it and haul it back to my place Okie dokie. Well, it's Monday. It's been two days, two and a half days, and uh, she's still up in the air, still straight, so that's a really good sign. I've got the ladder out here. I'm going to pull this rope, see if everything collapses like a house of cards, and hopefully it doesn't. 
good, no change. So I'm gonna pull down that rope and snatch block, hopefully get someone to help me drop the gantry, disassemble that, come back and get it with the truck. And uh, looks like the bat box is uh, good to go now. Also, there is a ringneck pheasant out here on this property. Well, the surrounding area, it keeps coming through the property. Um, they're not established in South Carolina, like ever. There's no single e-bird report for a ringneck pheasant. I, I'm 100% certain it's a, a released bird, but that's just weird. So anywho, he crows every five minutes. He sounds like a chicken with a wrung neck. Uh, but uh, I'll see if I can get that uh, recorded for you, because I'd kind of like to get that for my Zeno Canto. But yeah, that's that's interesting. Also that box. All right, snatch block, rope are off, still upright. And uh, she should crow here in about 30 to 45 seconds. Oh, there it went. There it went. Oh damn, I don't know if y'all saw that. In the woods somewhere over there. There's a pheasant in there somewhere. Anywho, I'm done chasing the pheasant. Alright, let me see if I can get this uh, gantry to magically disappear. Wow, there she is. That was quick. While we're at it, how about we disassemble this too? Bam! There we are, easy as pie. So yeah, that is the bat box finally done. The saga is complete. It's only taken me, I think it was 18 months, a little bit, no, 21 months to finally get this thing in the ground from when I built it. Whew, Lord, it didn't need to take that long, but stuff just got he hectic and uh, just hit some roadblocks and uh, well, here we are. So yeah, if you're looking to, to do one of these yourself, I would highly recommend uh, waiting until you need a man lift for some reason. Uh, and uh, just using that, um, the gantry worked, but it really needs to be like a 15, 16 foot gantry, not a 12. And at that point, it's just a little too cumbersome to really be worth it. Uh, theoretically, you could get the pole in the ground and then get a man lift and then swing that on over top and drop it down in there and then fasten it. Um, and that probably would be a little bit easier, but then you have to rent a man lift. And I mean, they're not horribly expensive to rent, but I would recommend having some other use for it before you go out and spend your money on that. And yeah, there she is. If you like this kind of stuff, go down there, like the video, comment, tell me uh, whether or not you have any success or uh, another way to raise a rocket bat box. And uh, if you want to see more interesting ecological stuff like this, go down there, smash that subscribe button. Until next time, Tom out. Mm -hmm.